In today's video, we'll learn about sine waves, light, sound, a mechanical spring, and even electricity coming to your house behave like a sine wave. But did you ever wonder why the sine curve is shaped this way? And what does the word sine even mean? Well, you'll find out in today's video. To begin, let's consider the Hong Kong observation wheel to understand a sine wave, or the London Eye, or any other Ferris or giant wheel. They're all circular. Let's assume it rotates counterclockwise, and you're taking a ride on it. There you are, as a red square, and it takes about 20 minutes to complete one rotation. Well, if you track the motion, you'll just go around in a circle and end up at the starting position in 20 minutes. But what if, instead of looking at the giant wheel from the front, we look at it from the side? So rotating the giant wheel towards us until it ends up looking like this. As you look at it from the side, it just looks like a vertical line. Here are the two views, A and B. Now, as the giant wheel rotates, the movement of the red square in view A is just in a straight vertical line, going up and down, and in view B, just in a simple circular motion. So we just took a two-dimensional motion on the right in view B with both vertical and horizontal components shown in blue and turned it into a one-dimensional motion, just vertical, as seen on the left in view A. So we start at time zero. In five minutes, you reach the top of the giant wheel. In 10, you're halfway around. In 15, you're at the bottom. And in 20, back to your start or original position. On a position versus time graph with the minutes marked, first, if the giant wheel is not rotating, no matter how much time passes, the red square will stay at the same position. Notice as time passes, position stays the same. So all you get is a horizontal line, again, showing no movement. Now let's plot the red square's movement when the giant wheel starts rotating on our time versus position graph for this vertical motion. From the start position, in 5 minutes, you'll reach the top of the giant wheel. In 10 minutes, you're back down to the start position. In 15, you're at the bottom of the giant wheel. Finally, in 20 minutes, you're back again at the start position. So here we go. This red curve is a sine wave. Again, notice the movement of the red square is just up and down vertically. When plotting this vertical movement on a time axis, that's where the sine wave gets its shape. So a sine wave, waves, or using a fancier word, oscillates back and forth from the start position to a maximum amount in either direction, which is called its amplitude. It's merely one of the components of a simple circular motion. So no wonder it repeats over and over, like a giant wheel ride. Another key concept to learn here is that if one of the giant wheel is bigger than another, as shown in blue and red, but they both take 20 minutes to complete one rotation, if we compare their sine waves with time, only the sine wave's amplitude increases. See the difference? The wave gets stretched only in the vertical direction. And if the giant wheels are the same size, but if the one in blue on the left rotates faster and takes only 10 minutes to complete a cycle instead of 20, as shown in red on the right, if we compare their sine waves with time, the sine oscillation gets faster. See the difference? The wave gets stretched only in the horizontal direction, or the time axis. Another way to plot a sine wave is position versus an angle instead of time. It's the angle from the blue horizontal line to the dotted red line. Let's call it phi, and the time axis is then changed to the angle, or also called the phase, measured in degrees, with 360 degrees being the same as 0 degrees, or back to the start position, one oscillation. So remember, in general, sine waves or the oscillations repeat over and over as time goes on, as shown here for four oscillations. But before we end this video, let's talk about where the word sine came from. The origins of the word sign can be traced back to AD 499. A mathematical chord was called ja in a language called Sanskrit in India used by mathematicians. Half chord then became ardha jaya, ardha meaning half. This was sometimes shortened to the word jiva. Then it ended up in the Arabic world and became jiba, 
and written in Arabic as JB, vowels not written. Eventually, Latin translators selected the word sinus to translate jub, thinking that this was the Arabic word jabe, which meant breast, and sinus had breast and bay as two of its meanings. Finally, in English, sinus was then imported to the word sign. So next time you see a sine wave, say, oh, look, it's an Arda J wave, and everyone will think you've gone crazy. Here's a question to check your understanding. Which giant wheel here is rotating faster? The red or the blue one? Are they the same size? Comment below for your answer. Here's a hint. You may pause and carefully look at both axes, position and time. The answer is in the description. Oh, and by the way, so when we broke down circular motion to both vertical and horizontal components, we just ignored the horizontal component. Aww. I wonder if we could have given the horizontal component a name too. <coughs> this cosine wave. Thanks for watching this learnability video.